Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back. I don't, I don't know why I'm like starting to lose my voice a little bit. It's uh, like my no my my nose is clogged. I, I honestly think that I'm like a little bit sick, but my uh, like my immune system's pretty good because I, I exercise often and shit. Like I'm pretty relatively healthy. I eat pretty healthy. I, I don't I don't like I, I sleep really healthy. Like just everything is pretty healthy. Um, but. <laughs> I, I do get sick sometimes, but it's, I, I feel like it's like my immune system fighting it back, or some shit like that. Um, anyways, oh my god, I, I lost what, what I was gonna say. Um, anyways, welcome to the daily plans and goals video. So today, I actually wanted to, um, I wanted to share a theory with you guys, like just a, something I've thought of from the from me testing out a lot of my teams. Um, yesterday, as you might might have known, I completed my B9 team, which is really, really slow. It literally takes 10 minutes to, to farm Golden's B9, which is the Seastar, Arthur, Cupid, and Hana. Um, yeah, it's really, really stable because I'm running two healers. Like, they, they cannot die, but it takes forever. Like, it literally takes takes 10, over 10 minutes or some shit like that to, to farm it. Um, obviously, if, it's, if I'm farming and I'm sitting there, I would click the boss, so it actually becomes like, you know, it literally halves the time if I click the boss. Um, but the 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 team is the team is doing all all right. I've got a few triangle slots. I I've gotten a lot more triangle slots. Um, actually, not that many. Like, I I think I've only gotten like two usable triangle like six star six star gems. Um, kind of had to sell the rest because they're all like flat stats and stuff. Really, really unfortunate. But I guess that's just the that's just the way the game works. Um, anyways, so I was doing a little bit more testing yesterday. I actually found out that I can actually do B9, B8 as well. Um, and the team is to use the Dark Sea Star, Arthur, Cupid, and my Dark Hunter. Um, it's not exactly like 100% stable. It does fail sometimes, but very, very rarely. I've done a, a bit of farming on that as well yesterday. Um, probably did about 60 runs or so as well. Um, and. Yeah, I think I think that's that might be a pretty good idea to, to farm up, uh, up farm up on some square slots. I can't talk right now. I'm just so I'm so fucked up. Uh, <laughs> anyways, there's there's a I, I've also been testing out my team, like the one I used for B9 on B10. Um, it worked a few times yesterday, but normally it would fail. And the main reason is the I I would usually fail at the part where I'm like just. Throughout the stage, if like three moon flowers or something spawn, then I would usually fail because my team isn't able to kill them before they get their SP bar up, which like pretty much insta kills like my Arthur or my Hana um, if they don't have my Cupid's shield on. Actually, no, it doesn't insta kill them. Like it only insta kills them when they're at like 70% HP. Like, and the only way to really is to either either become more tanky. Which is like just add a shit ton more HP and defense on my units, or I, I run, um, you know, I run an attacker that can that can kill the kill the moonflowers like really really fast um, before before anything bad happens to my team. And the only way I can make that work is if I have like a light tank, or else my my attackers would die. And I don't really have a light tank, so I can't really do that as well. Like it's not really stable because the, there's always a chance that the Moonflowers will attack my attacker and then he would die and then I would obviously fail the level because I would have no damage um, and I would have one I would be running one less healer. But I I thought of a really really good idea like for for B9 and it just might work and I'll, if it works it's also going to be a really really fast team. Um, a lot of you might know that. A lot of the more stable teams for B9 usually include units like the Dark Jack or the the Water Persephone as their healer, um, and the reason why is because those units have like a per turn heal, meaning that they're able to uh, make sure that your whole entire team is at like you know pretty much max HP at all times, um, and they would run like other attackers or defense aggressors to you know to do damage and also like stay stay tanky and uh, and and just you know just stay alive and just keep keep fighting you know keep fighting the boss with uh, tankiness and, and damage um, and like the 
the thing is, my my team usually is pretty stable. Like it, it, I can run it most of the time. But the problem is, I I would fail it half half of the time. I guess I could do like a run until it fails, and then you guys can see what happens. Um, it would be pretty stable, like like most some of the times. But then when like three moonflowers spawn, my one of my units would die instantly. Like. Um, when they hit me, like I usually don't take a lot of damage, but it's the the main problem is their second skill does a lot of damage. Like it does insane amounts of amounts of damage, um, AOE damage as well. So it's it's not like I can just RNG and hope it doesn't hit one of my units. Like anyone at like 70% HP without without the defense buff or the shield on is pretty much dead like 100%. If there's like you know more than two moonflowers using using that skill. Um, at the same time, so she she just used it and did did about like a quarter of my my team's health, more than a quarter I would say, about about eighty about forty percent, um, no about thirty percent, about thirty percent of their their max health. And normally normally my team can survive, but the problem is like when there's like three of them and then I happen to not kill them or I happen to not kill one of them, um, and my my units don't heal up like my. My uh, Hana or my Cupid, like my Arthur right now, if if, if I didn't get lucky I'm on my SP bar and just full nuke them, um, my Hana doesn't heal up, then there's a very very high chance that somebody is gonna die um, to to one of the AOEs. And if I if I run one less healer and run one more nuker, then I can't beat the boss who like just basically tanks through a lot of my damage, and and I won't be able to out sustain his damage. So. That's also another problem here. The main problem is my gems. Like my gems aren't that good. Um, but I already have a lot of like the six star gems at like you know some of most of my six star gems that I'm using already already maxed out. So I either need to farm better gems or or I don't know like just raise other different units to to run for this. Um, you know this is a this is a lucky run. This is a really lucky run. Um, but it's it's already pretty close. Like it's pretty close to to being able to do B10. But the the main problem is like when RNG is bad, it's just really bad. And it, that that was like really lucky. Like you guys didn't see what would usually happen, which is um, I wouldn't have my SP bar full, and then they wouldn't be armor broken, and somebody usually dies. But this is also really bad. Like the SP bars didn't go to the right units. My my other two units are silenced. They didn't resist that. So I basically need to survive for two more turns from the boss. Oh my god, I think I'm fucked. I think I'm legit fucked right now. Yeah, this is GG. Okay, I, I live. All right, that was that was really really bad, but I I still somehow lived. Shield and defense buff. All right, this is pretty OP. Um, anyways, usually what would happen is I would. I would uh, I would lose someone either before the boss, or or you can see what happened just now. Like j that just now was really really unlucky for me, but I, I was able to still survive. Uh, the boss isn't a, usually a problem when I'm running double healers. Like just now it, it was because none of them resisted it, and usually like they my healers are pretty high resist compared to my other units, um, especially the Hana who has like 50 something percent resist. I think I can't even I can't remember exactly. But as you can see, they can easily out sustain the boss, and I can definitely beat him. Um, but I, I, it's not always like this. Like I either need to have more damage to make sure I always kill the, um, the the moonflowers at every single stage, like before they can use their AOE nukes, or at least kill most of them before they can use their AOE nukes. Or I need to make my units like a lot tankier, like so they can survive, like even even when when they do like a full AOE nuke um, on like you know with three three moon flowers or something like that um, the boss also has really high resist like I've noticed that I, I was I'm never able to land anything on this guy like none of my attack downs land none of my armor breaks land on this guy so I kind of gave up on trying to sap him because it's gonna take a long long time as well um, but I think I'll definitely be stable if I run a sap team because the sap team is basically just like super super tanky. I'm gonna be like if I run a sap team, I'm gonna be gemming all my slots with just like HP HP defense or, or actually double defense HP, um, and then I can definitely survive. But 
you know, that's not that's not always the case. Well, I, I did land two debuffs just now. Right, usually when I land debuffs, he's he's pretty fucked. But um, usually it doesn't land. Like you know, as you can see, he's already at the, at the last quarter of his health before I landed anything. But his 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 damage is not that high. It's not like it's not like super scary. So I can always always just tank through it. Um, so I actually got got thinking from from the you know most most people run units like the Water Persephone or the Dark Jack. Um, and the reason why those those teams are really stable is because they they heal every single turn, which means that your team always ha has max health. And there's never that time when like you you know your team is like at 70% health and your healers don't use their heals. The I think the the main weakness of supports in the in this game is be is that their um, you know all buff skills are tied to a heal, and they'll never preemptively buff before they before like without using their heal like it's it's one of the problems with the with the AI and that's why on auto a lot of the supports aren't um, aren't as strong in my opinion because of how how the the way the AI works but if they do preemptively use their skills like for example my dark cupid um, I don't use him for the heal I use him for his shield and his shield is like you know his shield is based on his HP and I, I basically just gemmed him with with just all HP and um, you know the other reason is because he's also an HP aggressor meaning that more HP means more damage um, so I basically I, I gemmed him with full HP and the heal portion of his shield skill doesn't actually do that much but he's never going to use this skill unless one of my units are at 50% health and that's really really dangerous because um, you know, if I if I don't happen to kill the Moonflowers at 50% health, and they all use their AOE nukes, somebody's gonna die, like for sure, like 100% somebody's gonna die, unless I either make my Arthur like super super tanky, which isn't happening because his base stats for tankiness already isn't that high, like compared to other like defensive units, um, he's an attacker, his attack is definitely a lot higher than than defense units, but his you know his HP and defense on the other side isn't isn't all that good. Um, so there's no way I can make him tanky enough, and you know I can definitely six star my Hana, and then she probably won't die. But there's always the risk of like him dying, and if he dies, then uh, I'm not sure exactly if I can beat the boss, or you know because basically need to stun one of the units on the side or try to kill them as fast as possible, um, or else as you can see like from before what happened, um, you know that that might happen multiple times where the boss silences me and then I take a lot of damage, get armor broken, and you know, eventually my team would die. So I got thinking of a, a different strategy, um, running a different, uh, running a different type of type of healer or nuker, and that is like some someone that can nuke and and also sustain my team at the same time. So I was thinking the the Flashwing, because he has an HP siphon skill that can basically serve as a heal, um, and at the same time he's able to able to keep himself alive, so I don't have to build him too tanky. So he's always going to be at around max health every single turn. Um, so I definitely don't need to make him as tanky as this Arthur. I could probably just he could probably get by with just one HP rune. The other other thing is like I was thinking of maybe even switching out the Arthur and um, putting in just basically two nukers, kind of gen the same way, that have like self self sustain. And if that doesn't work, I was thinking of another another strategy, and that is to run four monsters that have self sustain. Um, basically, it's gonna be like these two, and then I'm gonna run like the the fire wall thing, and then like the fire vampire, who all they all of them have um have some sort of self sustain. Like he has adrenaline, and then these guys all have HP siphon, so they're always gonna be able to stay alive. Um, and then instead of having supports, they all just support themselves. I was thinking of that strategy. Like that was the that was the theory that I kind of came up with at the at the end of it. Like. That was like the final final stage of it. I think that might be a pretty good um, strategy for this game because of how the way the AI works and how supports are are really really dumb. Like the AI is just really really dumb for for support units. I mean, obviously, if there were if there were um, if he was able to use this skill when my monsters are at around like 70% HP, like if the AI was smarter, then obviously, um, you know, if I run these active healers, they would be a lot more stable and and 
you know, you wouldn't see as many Dark Jacks in the Water Purse in, in B10. You would probably see a lot of, still see a lot of Water Purse, but you probably won't see that many Dark Jacks um, in B10 because of, you know, because of, because, like, you know, these active healers would just outclass her. Um, but that's not the case because the AI is just really, really dumb. So I, I think one of the ways to kind of combat that is to run another, um, another nuker that can help me kill the kill the, uh, the the moon flowers really really fast and also provide some sort of sustain for my team to to um, to stay alive because I, I don't think he's able to sustain my entire team by himself I think he might be able to like if I just gave him a lot more HP his shield would be like super super thick um, and just made everyone have higher defense it would you know mitigate a lot more damage that's not always the case this is a really really long spotlight video I actually have a lot of things I wanted to talk about, so yeah, that was that was basically it for my plans. Um, definitely gonna start raising him. I might even raise him to six stars because I, I do have all the materials to do it, and I also have the gold, so I, I think might as well. Like, there's no there's no real um, downside to getting him to six stars, and he does actually heal a lot. Like, he does like it's this is not um, you know this is this is by no means. A, uh, insignificant. This is this is a pretty good heal, like pretty significant heal. Um, and yeah, I think I rambled on for too long. Anyways, if you're still here, I actually wanted to talk a little bit more about something else that is uh, related to a little bit more to my channel um, and not to the game. Like I would probably save this for a weekly update video, but. I, I I want to like start talking about it as, as soon as possible and and uh, you know get get your your guys' opinion um, and that is like I actually do plan to like start um, start more games like not not just play Monster Super League because it's it's like um, I'm gonna be perfectly honest there's not there's not that much content to make like you know I basically. After I do this, I can make some guides for like the Golem Dungeons and then eventually move on to Dragons. But there's a lot of time in between where I'm just farming. And you know, I, I try to do like those review videos and stuff. I'm definitely going to still keep those up. But they, they actually, like to be perfectly honest, they don't take that much time to make. And what I've been working on in the back is like, I've also been um, been, been looking for, for some other games that I can play at the same time. While, like while I'm, while I'm playing Monster Super League. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm just... Like, that's, that's just the plan. Like, the, the only thing I wanted to announce is, like, there's, um, I wanted to, like, make different types of content as well on my channel, uh, but still, still make this my main game. And, yeah, that was, that's pretty much it. That's, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. Hopefully, hopefully this helped you guys out, like, in terms of team building and stuff. I think I'm, I think I'm okay. Like, I'm not... I'm not the best at like theory crafting, but I think I'm pretty good at, at doing it for these type of, types of games. I like to go in, I like to test things out, and then I like to, um, you know, see the results, see the see the, the the rate of which I can clear things, and um, kind of identify what the problem is, and then think of a strategy using using the monsters that I have to to uh, to make up for it. So, anyways, hopefully this this, this did help you guys out. And if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to like it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.